Hey team, so to get that cool sci-fi augmented reality interface that you see on movies like Iron Man or way back in 2002 in Minority Report, first I'm going to create some cinematic lighting. So I'm using a beauty dish with a grid on the front to channel that light to get moodier shadows on my face. I've set the 600 watt key light to 1 8 power, accompanied by a strip box with a grid on the front, 180 degrees from the key light. The 200 watt kicker light is just under half power. And finally, a speed light, firing directly behind me, which will hopefully add a nice halo effect and separate me from this background. And the background speed light is at its lowest setting. So the first image will be a reference image to set the scene because I'm going to have to repeat these poses every time. My hands, my arms, my head will all have to be in the same position for each image. And the main element of this image is a glowing camera floating just above my hand, kind of like a hologram. So the second image will be just for the camera, which I'll specifically light from below with my LED panel. The third image will be the same as the first, but minus the camera. And the final image will be focused on this hand and I'll be lighting it from above with the LED panel. Okay, let's create some magic. So this is my reference image, and over in Photoshop, I have the image we're gonna be working on, along with the floating camera image and the illuminated hand shot, which will be my first composite. So grabbing the lasso tool, roughly draw around the hand, including some of the T-shirt. Then press Control or Command C to copy, head back to the main image, and Control or Command V to paste. Then with the Move tool, drag it into place. And to help with this, I'll reduce the opacity to see the underlying layer. And that looks about right. Next, I'll make a layer mask. Then pressing B on the keyboard for the Brush tool, and X to toggle the color to black. We'll go for a nice soft edge brush. and just begin softening the transition between the two images. And if you go too far, you can swap to a white brush. And I'm not worried too much about the creases in the t-shirt because I'll be covering this up shortly. And that's a pretty good start. Next, I'm going to color balance the image early on to introduce some cyans into the highlights. Also, I'll just add a gradient map and choose this cobalt blue and white. And then just change the blending mode to overlay. And I'll reduce the opacity to around 10%. Now for the next composite. Choosing the pen tool and set to path, just start drawing neatly around the camera. Then I'll turn the path into a selection. One pixel radius is fine. And once again, Control or Command C to copy, head back to the main image and Control or Command V to paste. Then with the move tool, I'll place this hovering just above my hand, reducing the opacity to 
and using the transform tool, fine tune the placement. And I'm happy with that. Once again, I'll create a mask of this layer. And with a black brush, reveal those fingers from underneath. And I'll just change the brush to a hard edge to get a nice clean mask. And I'll rename this layer to camera. Next, I'm going to make a duplicate of this camera layer and change the copy layer to screen. And the original, reduce the opacity by 50%, which creates this kind of holographic effect. Next, create a new layer. And with the pen tool, set to shape and color a nice turquoise blue. Two pixels wide, begin tracing around the edge of the camera. Perfect. Now to add some glow to bring this to life. Choosing the same color, I'll just tweak the settings for the desired effect. Spread 17, and size about 49 looks good. Now to tidy things up, select the shape and camera layers and group them together with Control or Command G. And I'll rename this to camera and you'll see a blaring problem with the glow effect. So I'll create a mask for the entire group. And with a hard edge black brush, just reveal the underlying fingers. Now for the next stage. I'm gonna bring over a few of my portfolio images. Drag the first image into the composition and just resize it. And reduce the opacity to around 50% and add that gradient map cobalt blue. And we'll clip the effect to this layer and change the blending option to overlay and opacity to I think 15%. Now repeat the process for image number two. With the gradient, I'll just increase the effect a little more to around 50%. And that's okay. The next piece of the puzzle is this camera. I'll choose the elliptical marquee tool and holding the Alt key, drag from the center and make a selection. Then the standard Control or Command C to copy and Control or Command V to paste. And this is going to act as our interface controls. I'll roughly place it Reduce the opacity to around 60%. And then change the blending option to screen. Then with the transform tool, refine its placement. Another image I'm going to use is a screen grab of Capture One's adjustment panel. This time I'll change the blending option to color dodge. Now we have a stock image of an aperture mechanism. Blending option to screen. And I'll make a layer mask. And for now, I'm gonna hide this layer because I'm gonna make a selection of my head. With the quick selection tool, roughly select, then head into select and mask to refine. I'll use this tool, which is perfect for selecting hair, and just trace around the edge. Then click OK. Now head back to the mask that we previously created, and with a black brush, mask out the image from the face. And then Control or Command D to deselect. Now I'm going to remove some of the oranges with a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'll clip the adjustment to the aperture picture and with the color picker tool, sample those oranges. I'll just increase the range to include more of the gamut. 
and then a simple change to the colour to a nice cyan blue. And adjust the lightness a touch. And one more thing, I'll just mask out the top portion as well. Now to tidy things up. Choose all of the new layers and group them together with Ctrl or Command G. Rename to Screens. And now they're all in one place. Now it's time to make them glow just like the camera. Create a new group. I'll rename it to Shapes and create a new layer inside. With the rectangle tool, no fill colour, just a border at two pixel thickness and that same turquoise colour. Draw rectangles around those images. Then draw lines to link them to that floating camera. Now I think I'll create one more rectangle. And now for a little decoration. Create one more new layer. Choose the brush tool. And I think I'll make the brush size around 15 pixels and hardness 100%. And create some nice little dots at the end of those lines. Now you can collapse the group for neatness and drag it above the screens. Then again create an outer glow effect to the entire group. So we're almost there. Create one more group, rename this to finger controls. A new layer, brush tool, size around 60 pixels, and hardness 25%. We'll go with a white brush and just create two dots on the finger and thumb. Our trusty outer glow effect, and then tweak the settings. Then collapse the group to tidy up. Now for a flare effect overlay, which I'll drag over the forefinger. Then change the blending option to screen and just reduce the opacity by 25%. So the final stage of this composite, create one last group and rename it to Metadata. And with a new layer, create some text. I'm using the camera settings for the original base image. Now I'll change the color to our standard turquoise and add to glow the text. So two more images will make up this final composite. The first being the Photoshop logo itself. Blending option to color dodge looks nice. And opacity 50%. And the last image is a screen grab of a histogram. And I'll color dodge this too. One final adjustment. I'll create a new layer and create a rectangle around the window. Fill it with the turquoise colour. Then take the opacity way down to 5%. And that's it. Here's the finished image in all of its glory. So that's it team, see you next time, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button.